uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, this is a topic from, from two. Uh, normally, this is the crop husband practices, but to be specific, we're going to look at harmful effects of pests. So you are with me, and Kobe, your presenter. So let's now look at the harmful effects of pests. So pests may cause physical destruction to crops by eating leaves, stems, roots, or flower. So there's physical destruction of, I mean, uh, of crops. So this pest will eat the leaves, stems, flowers. So that's physical destruction. So if the pests are not controlled, uh, they can cause considerable reduction in crop yields. So, uh, um, you know, we're saying that they eat leaves, stems, as well as roots. So if they're not controlled, it means uh, crop yields now will be reduced or there will be low crop yields. So some pests, they lower crop quality. For example, uh, we talk of cotton stainer. Uh, I mean cotton stainer. They stain cotton lint, lowering the crop quality. So pests, they also lower the quality. So some pests are disease vectors. It means they transmit disease from one crop to another. So um, uh, these uh, disease vectors, they are sucking pests such as you talk of aphids, you talk of uh, mary bugs, and cotton stainers, they transmit virus, I mean, viruses and fungi diseases, uh, infection in the crops. So, these are some of the harmful effects of pests. Another one is uh, some pests, they suck sap or they suck the juice, depriving the plant of its food, leading to low yields. So let's now let's now look at control measures of uh, pests. So uh, the control measures of pests uh, they are categorized in the following. So I've got catch control measures, I've got physical control measures, I've got biological control measures, I've got chemical control measures, I've got integrated pest management (IPM). Then I've got legislative pest control. So let's. Uh, look at each and every measure in general. So the first one is cultural uh, control practices. So on top of cultural control practice, this is the manipulation of the environment. Okay, so you change the environment, making that environment unfavorable for survival of pests. So you change the environment, and upon changing the environment, you are making that environment not suitable or not favorable for the survival of Best. That one is known as cultural control practice. So the basic principle of cultural control is the disruption of the uh, development uh, sake of the pest. Okay, by exposing them to adverse conditions which may kill them or deny them of food. So you change the environment so that the environment should not be favorable, and also you break the life cycle. Uh, by exposing them to adverse or to harsh weather conditions which may later kill them or deny them of food okay? they will die at the end so um, let's look at examples of cultural control methods so the first one is in, uh, use of clean planting materials so if you use clean planting materials which are free from pests uh, will help to establish the crops which are uh, also free from the pests. So this is very effective in controlling banana weevils. Okay, then I've got timely planting. So this involves growing of crops early before pests build up. So we have to plant early before the pests they build up. So this enables the crop to grow healthy and escape the attack. For example, uh, early planted maize, crop are unlikely to be attacked by the stock borer. Then we've got proper seedbed preparation. So seedbed preparation should be uh, thorough and preferably cultivated in the dry season. So if you are to prepare the seedbed, they should be prepared in the dry season. 
Okay. So during the dry season, it means you'll be exposing the pest to harsh weather condition to the sun. Therefore, the pest will die. Okay. Then this help in exposing soil upon pest to the adverse condition or to the uh, to the predators. You talk of bears which eat them up. So this ensures a clean seed bed free of soil borne pests such as chaffa, grubs, and nematodes, which affect young seedlings. Uh, another example of cultural control method is uh, planting uh, resistant crop varieties. So cultivation of crop varieties which have mechanism of resisting pest attack. So the other crop varieties, and they have got that mechanism whereby they are able to resist the pest attack. So that's another way. So for example, uh, uh, high tearing soil gum composite for soot fry attack, whereas goosenecked uh, soil gum discourages beds. So let's look at uh, another uh, cultural control method, which is weed control. So certain weeds act as alternate host of crop pest. So there are other uh, weeds uh, they harbor or they host the pest. Therefore, if you control these weeds, it means you are also controlling the pest. Example, we have got marrow weeds. Uh, we have got these weeds, they harbor cotton stainers. Therefore, controlling weeds in a field of crops help to avoid pest attack in the crops. Then talk of uh, observing field hygiene is another uh, cultural control method. So field hygiene involves farming practices that in, uh, ensure little or no planting uh, plant material that may harbor pest in the field. So removing the planting materials that may store or may keep the pest in the field. Example of field hygiene practices, you talk of burning of crop residues of previous season, which help to control uh, cotton uh, bowen and regrowing also, removing and destroying uh, the affected crops. That one is also field hygiene. Then we've got matching, another uh, cultural control method. So matching, this is an effective way of controlling pests. For example, uh, cough strips and uh, antesia bugs are uh, predated the more once the crop is matched. Okay, so matching, they are covering the crops with uh, glass, it's one way of controlling the pest. Then we've got the pest attack, I mean pests attack themselves on the match, exposing them to predatory uh, agents. So if you match, you find that the pest will be attacking, I mean attacking themselves on the match, therefore exposing them to predatory agents. Then talk of cross season. So on top of cross season, this is a period during which a particular crop is deliberately not grown in a given area in order to control the pest buildup. So you just stop or you don't grow the crops in a certain season so that uh, um, you avoid the buildup of the pest. So you are breaking the life cycle so because the pest will not build up. So that one is known as it. Uh, cross season. So most cotton pests can be effectively controlled by this method. So the principle of this method is that the pest will starve to death during the absence of that particular crop because they will starve to death. They have nowhere to feed on. So that's uh, cross season. Then we've got the other one which is the use of trap crops. So on top of uh, trap crops, these are crops which attract pests, diverting them from main crops. So the other crops, you plant them in the field, they'll be diverting uh, the pests from the main crops and they'll be focusing on those trap crops. So that's another way. I mean, that's another cultural 
control. So the top crops is grown together with the main crops. The pest can be killed by the use of other means while on the trap crops. So if they are on the trap crops, they are feeding on the trap crops, they, be, they can be killed using other means. For instance, rows of sorghum in maize field reduces incident of stock borer. So it means uh, stock borers now will be focusing uh, they focus their attention to uh, sorghum. Therefore, uh, the main crops, which are maize, uh, will just be growing freely. Okay, so that's about uh, trap crops. Then we've got the other one, which is proper spacing. So proper spacing, uh, uh, it helps to control the pace in such a way that it becomes difficult for the pest to move from one plant to another. So it's just about the distance. Uh, however, in uh, uh, in groundnuts, when the I mean the, when the groundnuts are planted close to each other, uh, there's reduction of aphid attack. So cross spacing. Uh, it also helps to reduce the groundnut, I mean, aphid attack in groundnuts. Then, about the other one, which is timely harvesting, is also one way of catch or control method. So, harvesting crops in good time prevents serious attack by pests. Okay, so you harvest before the serious attack of pests uh, um, is there. So, that's about timely harvesting. For example, a drain harvesting maize exposed the crop to extensive damage by rats as well as weevils. So you know, if you are best rate, you find that the maize have been attacked by the clown, I mean the uh, rats as well as the weevils. So time harvesting is very important in controlling some of the. So another one is crop rotation. So in talk of crop, crop rotation, uh, crops which are more susceptible to a particular pest are alternated with the other crops which are not uh, susceptible to it. So we find that there are other crops, I mean, there are other pests, they are crop specific. Okay. So for example, talk of weevils, they attack maize. So if you rotate, let's say you plant maize this year, next year you plant groundnuts, it means those weevils will not attack groundnuts. Therefore, uh, they will starve to death because they have nowhere to feed on. So that's how crop rotation uh, help to control some of these pests. For example, crop in uh, mm. Solanis family, such as tomato and Irish potatoes, should be uh, grown in succession as they are uh, susceptible to similar pests. So they should not be grown. Uh, uh, in uh, in succession, why? Because they are they have got the similar pest, therefore uh, they can be attacked by the same pest. Then we have got proper plant nutrition. So healthy plants are known to be more resistant to pest. For example, aphids cause minimal damage to healthy beans crops. So this is achieved by application of right amount of manure and fertilizer. So when talk of proper plant nutrition, it means you have to make the plant healthy. You have to feed the plants, make the plant healthy by application of right amount of manure as well as fertilizer. So if the plants are healthy, it means they may not be easily attacked by the pests. And sometimes they resist to the attack. Why? Because they are healthy. So that's about plant, I mean, proper plant nutrition. Then let's look at the uh, mechanical pest control practices. So when we talk of mechanic, mechanical pest control practices, these are uh, also referred to as physical means of pest control. So it involves using mechanical means to kill the pest and creating barriers to prevent pests from getting in the contact with the target crops. So sometimes uh, you create the physical barrier to prevent the pest from, I mean, getting in contact with the, um, the crops. That one is known as uh, mechanical pest control. So under mechanical control practices, we've got the following. We've got irrigation 
or I mean irrigation using flooding. So flooding is one of the uh, mechanical pest control. Because if you flood, you are suffocating. I mean, you suffocate the pest. You talk of use of rainfall temperatures. Just increase the temperatures in storage facilities. Rainfall temperature. It means the pest will die. You talk of suffocation. You talk of hand picking. Okay, trapping and killing them. You hand pick. You destroy the. I mean, you destroy. You crush the pest. Okay, you talk of creation of physical barrier. Okay, you talk of physical barrier. Let's say uh, you want to control. Let's say. Uh, goats from entering the maize field you create the physical barrier you create a fence okay that's physical barrier that's i mean that one is also a mechanical control measure then talk of proper drying so if you dry the crops properly it becomes very difficult for pests uh to feed on uh to feed on those crops then talk of use of scarecrows okay you put the scarecrows in the field and the person will be scared to enter the field. Uh, that one also is a uh, mechanical control measure. Then uh, the use of explosives will scare the pest away. We talk, we talk of the use of distress calls. Distress calls uh, is also one way of mechanical control measure. Then let's start by looking at the irrigation method or flooding method. So talk of irrigation method. Uh, irrigation drones space such as leaf miners and aphids while flooding suffocate moles in the soil. Okay, so when you use flooding, the suffocation. Uh, talk of overhead irrigation washes aphids away from the cabbage. So if you use the overhead irrigation, water will be coming from the above. Therefore, the aphids will be washed away from the cabbage. Then let's look at the use of rainfall temperatures. So this involves application of extreme or very high temperatures to control the pests, uh, especially in post harvest management practices. Okay, for instance, talk of hot weather is I mean what hot, hot water is used to control the pink uh, bollworm in cotton seeds. So hot water can be used to control these pink bollworms in cotton seeds. Then we've got suffocation. We talked of suffocation. So suffocation, some storage bins are filled with carbon dioxide to inhibit pest multiplication or survival. So we can use carbon dioxide in storage facilities, okay, uh, to inhibit or to control the multiplication of uh, some pests. Then let's go to hand picking, trapping, as well as killing. So this involving you catch the pest, killing it. Uh, it is even I mean it is effective in controlling pests such as rats, moles, bees, giants, loopers, uh, using special traps. So hand picking, trapping them as well as killing them. Then talk of creation of physical barrier. When talk of uh, physical barrier. We talk of metal place fixed on poles for raised granaries prevent uh, vermis like rats from gaining entry into the stores. So you find that in the granaries they have got uh, metal plates uh, in the I mean along the poles. So these metal plates uh, will prevent uh, some pests like rats from entering into the granaries. Then talk of use of sticky materials on trees such as, I mean, on tree, um, tree trunks. They help to control pests like scales in citrus fruits. Um, fence physically keep off the large animals. Talk of the fencing. If you fence, it means you are keeping the large animals from entering the field. That one also is physical barrier. Then we've got uh, proper drying. Uh, proper drying is also one of the mechanical control. So crops to be stored for a long period must be properly dried uh, to very low moisture level. So if you properly dry, it means you are removing the moisture. So 
This ensures the I mean this ensures that the produce is hard enough to limit the pest damage of the plants. So cereal crops are best stored after properly drying to a moisture content of 11 to 13 percent. Then we've got scarecrows. So when we talk of scarecrows, uh, scarecrows are a human-like uh, object uh, used to scare away the bees. So you put a human-like object in the field so the bees, if they see that object, they'll be scared and they go away. Okay, and also other large uh, animals are kept away from the field. So these animals are uh, talk of monkeys, squirrels, talk of these uh, these animals that have been successfully controlled by this method. Then you, uh, you talk of the use of explosives. So these are thrown at the breeding place of birds at night to kill or scare them off. So they are thrown at the breeding place of the birds. So after hearing the sound, uh, these birds they will be scared away or they'll be killed. Then we've got the other one, which is distress calls. So when talk of distress calls, this is when the sound uh, sound of captured pests or that of predator is lip early prayed from a loudspeaker scaring them away so you record the sound of uh, the uh, uh, the sound of the uh, predator of that pest so the sound of that predator will be prayed again and again so that the pest now will be scared away so you have to take a note that mechanical pest uh, control measure have the merit of not causing environmental pollution and the demerit of being costly. So the disadvantage is that they are costly. Some require a high level of skill to be effective. So this is just a picture of, uh, uh, we have talked of district cause. You can record the sound of a predator of certain pace and be bring them in the field so the pest will be scared then we've got uh, biological pest control practice so this biological this uh, method which i employ to use living organisms which are natural predators of pests so use natural organisms which are predators of certain pests for example you can use a cat to control rats so biological methods have the advantage of being self-perpetuating, causing no environmental pollution and safe on labor. However, it takes too long to research for the correct biological agent. That's very true. It takes very long time to research for the correct biological agent. So I've got predators and their target pests. Okay. So we've got parasitic wasp, I mean wasp. So target based, we've got white fry in citrus, we've got cough mary bugs. So these are the target based. Then we've got lady belt beetle. So this lady belt beetle, uh, they feed on aphids, cotton cushion scales. Then we've got uh, praying mantis. So this praying mantis, uh, they feed on uh, giant rupas. Then we've got cats. Cats, they attack moles, rats, as well as mites. Then we've got chicken. Chicken, they feed on cotton stainer and termites. So let's now look at chemical control practice. So this is the use of chemicals to control the pests. Sometimes they're known as pesticides because they are controlling the pests. So the chemicals are known as pesticides. Then application of pesticides is done in a number of ways. So you can apply by dusting, spraying, fumigation of the soil and the produce, then sterilization of implements. So this is just an example of spraying. So you can see a farmer there is spraying, using a sprayer, spraying uh, in maize crops to control, I mean, to control some of the pests. Thank you so much. 
uh, this is what I had in this video. If there are any questions, that's our uh, WhatsApp number and that's our email. Uh, see you in our next video. Thank you.